Dan Mowdy is standing by with a special guest, Lafayette graduate and ESPN announcer, Beth Mowens. Hey, Gary, you might say that it all started back at a, a 3,000 watt station in Homer, New York. But even before then, for Beth Mowens, it started on a small but mighty campus in eastern Pennsylvania, USA. Beth Mowens, welcome to the Lafayette Sports Network. Always good to come back here and always good to see progress. I, I wish I had been able to play on a court like this in an environment like this. Great to be back. What is it that brings you back to Lafayette College? Well, I, I usually have an opportunity uh, to have some students come out and shadow me uh, for an externship. And unfortunately, I didn't have any games in the area this year, so I figured if I had a chance, I'd swing through campus and be able to talk and interact with some of the students that way. And then uh, tomorrow is the Oaks Leadership Council luncheon, so I'm going to have a chance to sit down with a lot of the coaches and and uh, and talk to them a little bit. Excellent. I understand the Maroon Club's also involved in that. Yes, so absolutely. a combined effort here. Now, in your playing days, Beth, to your credit, you had the three highest assist seasons here at Lafayette College and continue to this day to be the assist leader, having graduated in 89. What are uh, some of your fondest memories and some of your best accomplishments that stay with you? Oh, gosh. Well, I, I think first and foremost, uh, you, you always think of the Lehigh games. And we lost to them once my freshman year. We split, and then we never lost to them again. So I've always been very proud of that accomplishment. I think we finished 9-1 and one in my career against Lehigh. And then um, it's all about the good times. It's all about learning and, and developing your skills. But at the end of the day, it's about winning. And we were always proud. We had a stretch of four straight years with 20 wins and uh, uh, the old East Coast Conference Championship. So we had a lot of good days, a lot of good nights when we were here. And a fantastic and legendary coach, Pat Fisher, oh, yeah. who is here for just about all women and men's games. Yeah, yeah, I've had a chance to uh, sit down with Coach Fisher and uh, shoot the breeze and, and relive a lot of our fond moments. And uh, we're trying to keep an eye on the women's score tonight up at Colgate. Still, the only place in my career I ever fouled out was when oh. I went back home to upstate New York. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Coach Fisher was a terrific influence on me and, and, and all of those that played for her. You were an English major here while, while playing basketball at Lafayette College. How did that combination prepare you for your chosen career path? Well, you know, I always knew I wanted to be a sportscaster, and I got some great advice when I was young uh, to get a good liberal arts education and go and work and do a lot of the broadcasting stuff on the side. So. This was a perfect fit for me to come to Lafayette. I had an opportunity to earn the starting job here right away and, and play with a great team. And as an English major, you're doing a ton of reading and writing. And those are terrific skills to have when you get into the communications field. No doubt about it. Yeah. Now, as far as uh, your experience here on the court with Pat Fisher at the helm, what were some of the, the lessons, lifelong lessons, that you learned here at Lafayette College? Well, you know, I when I arrived, they had just won a conference championship, and they were returning probably the two best players in the history of the program in Mo McManus and Stacy Caginello. And they swung my dorm room very early upon my arrival here at Lafayette and said, you will do a good job running the point, and you will pass us the ball. And I said, okay, that sounds like a good plan. And uh, it worked out real well for all of us. Fantastic. And I think yeah. your freshman season was one of those top three assist yes. years for you. Yes, and, and Mo McManus still kids me. The championship that we beat Lehigh my sophomore year, she actually, for once in her career, passed it back out to me, and I made a shot to beat the then engineers. So that was always a great, great memory. Beth Mowens, it is a privilege and an honor to have you here gracing our sidelines. And I understand you're going to be joining our guys doing a little uh, analysis and breakdown in the second half. These guys were around when I was here, and Coach Leone was with the men's team when I was here. So it, it, we'll have a lot of fun. Absolutely. Beth Mowens from ESPN, earth, earth breaking, the first or one of two women to do play by play for college football in the USA, doing a great job with ESPN. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Back to Gary John. Welcome back to the Farmers Insurance Halftime Report. Our stats are brought to you, as always, by Nacy Printing, handling Lafayette's printing needs. As you look at the individual numbers, you might be a little surprised by Seth Hendricks with just one, John. But Seth's had a good first half. Six rebounds, a couple of assists. So he's been part of the action. He just hasn't put the ball in the basket all that much. He's done a lot of other things, Gary. I'm looking at the stat sheet. I don't think he's attempted a shot. Credit Colgate. They're really locking down on him and not giving him much room. And uh, other than that, you know, Bray Scott really carried the load. Again, the, the idea is to shut down Tazinski and Hendricks and let somebody else beat you. Obviously, the Tillotson three 
three at the very end of the first half uh, was hurtful for Lafayette. They had really fought themselves back to within four. As we take a look at the team numbers, now I'm going to make Beth Mowens do a little work. Uh, <laughs> Beth, I know you've been paying attention to the entire ball game, and I know you normally aren't the analyst, but John isn't all that good at it either. <laughs> so uh, we'll let you look at the numbers. Well, you know, when I was doing my research for the game, I was so impressed with all the offensive efficiency numbers and, and the high field goal percentage and the high three-point percentage. So I'm going to chalk that up as being a little uncharacteristic for the Leopards and really wipe my brow and say, hey, considering how poorly they shot, lucky to be in this thing with the score the way it is. And if they hadn't accounted that three, I mean, they're, they're in, in business. So I look forward to them shooting it better in the second half. And poor shooting are not words we use with these teams. They're number one and number two yeah. in the Patriot League in field goal percentage. When we come back, we'll go through the highlights. That will be John Leone. Stay with us.